Now I am with Ingrid, who is an incoming exchange student coordinator, and I want to talk with her more about Tallinn and the tips uh, for the Tallinn. So welcome, first of all. Uh, would you like to come inside for further? Thank you, sure. <laughs> so I will yeah, take you here. Yes. Welcome again, first of all. Thank you for coming here. And... Uh, as an international student, I have also a lot of uh, questions and uh, I know that uh, questions coming from other international students. So let's uh, start with the cultural specifics, maybe, because Estonian culture is a di different culture than the rest of the world. Uh, so is there any language barrier, first of all? Okay, thank you. First, uh, I'm so glad that you have invited me here. Um, and I'm just right now dealing with a lot of Erasmus exchange students that have come here. If you are following us, I asked you to come over here, then hello, hello. Mm -hmm. uh, language barrier. Uh, actually, not, it has not really been a big problem because a lot of people in Estonia speak English. And uh, the main thing is maybe to learn a couple of words in Estonian, like tere, aita, things like that. And as soon as you say these words, people melt. Mm -hmm. Because probably you will hear a lot that, that uh, you come here and they say that Estonians are very reserved and very serious and cold. But I think it's a good tip to learn a couple of words in Estonian mm -hmm. and then as soon as you start using them, people are totally different. Yeah. So I don't think uh, people would have many language barriers. Our university campus is bilingual. Mm -hmm. We have all the signs in, in Estonian, in English, the documents, uh, everything is in, in two languages. So. I think it's quite uh, quite easy to adjust in this in this sense in Tallinn. Yeah, in this case, I felt also so comfortable uh, because everybody was talking in English. Uh, it made my jobs much more easier. And you said that Estonians might be reserved. Uh, how about they? How they are welcoming the international people? Well, I think it takes a little bit of time before they warm up to you. Uh, so I, I think like use my a uh, little bit my, my tricks like try to mm. have a couple of words in Estonian and 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 um, like I, I think they will become friendly and the more you get to know people uh, the, the the better the relationship is I think it's also it's, it's very hard to start the relationship with Estonians but then it's very hard to stop also <laughs> so usually they say that uh, a lot of uh, students have said that if they have made friends in Estonia it's for a lifetime yeah true. Um, it might become as a surprise at first when you come to, to Estonia that you go to the shops and maybe the shop assistants are not so welcoming, uh, sometimes they don't say hello. Uh, I would say like don't ever take it personally, it's nothing personal, it's just the way people are. Estonians uh, usually appreciate it very much and I think some international students have learned to appreciate it too. They can go to the shop and they can mind their own business. Exactly. Nobody is coming to them and, oh, yeah. would you like to try this and this and this? They can just go around nicely and quietly and when they need help then they go and ask and then they get quite yeah. a friendly um, assistance after that. Yes. Uh, after people, let's talk about the weather conditions uh, a little bit. Uh, what kind of weather uh, it's expected by the future students? The weather is always something that uh, kind of causes a little bit of uh, giggling yeah. <laughs> because so we all uh, like to say that uh, it's the worst uh, weather that we can, we can get, that it is in Estonia, is actually not true. So if you hear that the weather conditions are horrible, it's not true. And we also like to say that there, there is no bad weather, mm -hmm. it's just you need to have appropriate clothes. Yes. Uh, it can get cold in winter. And actually it's very good when it gets cold in winter. Uh, this year we have had some really cool days with snow and we truly appreciate that. Then we can walk around, uh, enjoy the snow, go skiing. Uh, the spring is so nice here. Uh, when you experience the spring here in Estonia, I think it's something extraordinary. Yes. You see everything coming to life, the yeah. flowers, the the, the leaves on the trees and people start smiling and and uh, uh, and all these things it's, it's just a, a wonderful time yeah. summer with uh, long days almost no night magical magical <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it can be sometimes cool so if you see pictures that people enjoying the beach 
it can yeah. also be quite cold and chilly, mm -hmm. but like once in a while we get uh, uh, still warmer periods and then there have been summers with, uh, with really warm weather. Mm -hmm. And the fall, of course, uh, is uh, very colourful. We saw in your video, for example, mm -hmm. walking mm -hmm. in the park, mm -hmm. it's a wonderful time. Yeah. Uh, can get colder, can get rainy, but then I put your raincoat on and go outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even though the uh, conditions are uh, extreme, especially in the winter and the summer, I really like the weather here because I'm coming from Istanbul and you cannot imagine how dirty the weather is. But when I come here, I can definitely feel that my lungs are <laughs> more open. So I definitely don't mind how cold it is or how long mm -hmm. the days are or how short the days are. So I think um, it's a real, uh, really good experience uh, to have such conditions as well. And I say for the dark times that the recommendation is to have candles, a lot of yeah, candles, yeah, yeah. go to the sauna mm -hmm. and have friends. Yeah. So uh, then you survive the, the dark winter. Mm -hmm. It's for a couple of years, I think it's a very nice yeah. experience as well. Um, let's come to the accommodation maybe. Uh, do you have dorms? How do you get the room? Uh, how is the condition about dorms? Um, I have to admit that it's, it's not very um, easy uh, because we have just one dorm where we can uh, offer a place for international students and uh, during normal times when we have a lot of students then not everybody gets a place in the dormitory. Mm -hmm. uh, the dormitory however is quite nice, it's, it's really close to the university, it's pretty much two minutes walking mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the rooms are nice and cosy, it's a shared room, we cannot offer Unfortunately, due to the limited number of places, mm -hmm. uh, it's always in a shared room. So there are double rooms, there is Wi-Fi, uh, bed linen, and everything is in the dorm. So it's, it's a heaven, like mm -hmm. everybody wants to get to the dorm. Yeah. And it's very affordable, actually. Yeah. I mean, even, for example, I'm living in my own place, uh, but even this is so affordable. The prices are not so high at mm -hmm. all. Uh, if you share your flat with someone, it's mm -hmm. even more and more affordable. Yeah. Uh, comparing to price, it's also very hygienic and mm -hmm. uh, in order. Uh, but to, to be specific, how much the dorms? Uh, if I remember now correctly, I think uh, a place in, uh, in a smaller room was 170 euros mm -hmm. a month. And that includes also, I think they clean once a, once a week and, uh, and then you can use a common kitchen there. Um, and then uh, it also, like all the utilities are, mm -hmm. are included and I think it was 195 for a bigger room. So mm. the price difference I think was 20, mm -hmm. 25 euros, but then the room is bigger. But still very yeah. affordable. Speaking of sharing, uh, can we choose our roommates? Normally, uh, not, it's not so easy because uh, they make the list of students, they put them in the rooms and, uh, and then we do not really want to encourage that either, yeah. especially with exchange students because uh, <laughs> then they come here and then very nice, they can be with a friend from Spain yeah. in the same room, but then uh, there is no language <laughs> practice, True. no cultural mingling. So uh, we would like to have this experience also in the dorm that they can get to know other cultures, practice their mm -hmm. English and... Mm -hmm. but speaking of uh, international, uh, can we get international food here? How is the food process? Uh, I think there are some very, very specific things that probably are, are hard to, to get. I have been to Turkey myself, I, uh -huh. I think there are some things that you have in Turkey and, and you can mm -hmm. never find them there. Here some spices, I know that there are people who come here and they take their own spices with them. But yes, we have a, a lot of um, uh, different restaurants where they serve Chinese, Indian, um, Mexican, Italian, of course, Spanish food. So I'm sure that you can still find something. Yeah. But maybe a recommendation that if you have something very specific, like bring. spices, maybe you can bring some spices yeah. with you. I am bringing that kind of <laughs> yeah. specific spices or other stuff. But apart from restaurants, there are some little shops. For example, for Turkish people, I can say that there are one or two shops that they, that you can uh, find very specific things. For example, sucuk. <laughs> so, um, uh, let's go to the other questions. Um, okay, how much does a, sp a student spend in a month? Well, that's uh, very individual. Mm -hmm. um, um, I can say that uh, that maybe you should 
count like about 400, 500 a month, euros a month, like average, besides the accommodation. I, I think there are students that can do with a lot less and there are students that probably spend a lot more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It also depends if you want to go and travel around, uh, how you eat, if you make the food yourself or you prefer to go to restaurants. Uh, the, the, the university canteen is quite reasonable, uh, maybe you can have lunch there from 3 to 4 to 5 euros, sure. quite good lunch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I would say like maybe on an average 400, 500 euros, but I'm sure like if you do like maybe a little bit of um, studying before mm -hmm. and you can you can manage with uh, with, with less money or so mm -hmm. but then yes that's on top of the accommodation so. mm -hmm. okay um, about the salary for example um, as far as you know maybe uh, you can both study and work at the same time but how are the salaries for students well, it, again, it depends uh, what sort of a job they get. If they get something very simple, uh, many students work um, as couriers in, in Volt and Volt. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I don't think these salaries that to, when starting there are not, uh, they are that good. Uh, some students, they do find uh, maybe their field related job or something that is very, uh, uh, very um, um, like much related to their career or their interests. So this is something that is already uh, better paid. And there could be jobs that are very well paid, especially if you can find something in the IT sector. Mm -hmm. uh, they are always looking for a specialist there. So if you have that in mind, uh, you can go to the webpage. Uh, I don't know if you have talked about it already, work in Estonia. Yes, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. there are quite mm -hmm. a lot of work, um, job offers there. And, and most probably you can find a lot in the, in the field of IT. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there the salaries I, I think would be like maybe starting from 1,500 and then you already going up to mm -hmm. 2,000, 3,000 depending on what sort of a specialist you are mm -hmm. and what is needed, the salaries could be, could be quite good there. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it, it means that you're a full-time yes. full yeah. uh, employee there, mm -hmm. which could uh, at the same time get on the way of your studies. So maybe that's something for the future career to, yes. to consider. But uh, yes, the minimum salary uh, is 500 euros a month. So it's uh, something that uh, that maybe is a very, very simple job somewhere in a restaurant, maybe cleaning somewhere and, and probably something that is maybe easier to, uh, to do uh, on the side of studies. Okay, as a little reminder, I would like to add that if you are interested in uh, work at the same time, uh, you can find the information in workinestonia.com. But before working, we need to do some internships uh, as an obligatory or not. How students can find internships? Uh, depending on their field of studies, uh, uh, I know that in some academic units they help the students, for example, for education, uh, that they can help students find a place. Uh, if they wish to go and do their traineeship abroad, uh, which is very much supported, uh, however, then the students need to find a place themselves. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it's something that is really worth considering and going to do the traineeship abroad. And uh, we have some offers on our webpage. Work in Estonia has also some offers uh, for internship here in Estonia. Um, then uh, it's always uh, worthy asking from academic units. Uh, students can also turn to me. Uh, I can, I can um, find people who know if there are places at the university. Uh, some, uh, some students do come here just for internship at the university, so there are sometimes some places available. Uh, but if you are already here, then uh, yes, most probably students will have to try to find <laughs> an internship place uh, on their own, and depend depending on the, on the field that they are studying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, for example, in my field it was um, a little bit challenging because film investor requires Estonian language. But what about generally? Uh, do I have to know Estonian to work or to find an uh, internship? Uh, generally, no. if it's not something where you really need, need Estonian, I think there are many places where you can do with English only. There are many startup companies in, in Tallinn where the staff is very international, transfer-wise, for example, Pipedrive, um, um, 
uh, there are so many more that uh, I think students can find an internship place maybe there. And they are uh, kind of like these international staff companies uh, where you can, where English is a must rather than Estonian <laughs> maybe. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm sure there are many more that where you can just manage with, uh, with English. <laughs> Maybe a couple of phrases in Estonian would be good to start, yeah. like especially if you're in customer service somewhere. Yeah. But if you live in a country that I think it's kind to learn a couple of yeah. words, of course, uh, and it's also for your benefit, uh, yeah. it always develops your character. But uh, let's come back to the some cultural uh, differences. Um, how do you think that um, international people are satisfied? How many percent in general in cases like from food to anything? <laughs> uh, I, I always uh, see the results of our exchange students mm -hmm. and uh, they are very satisfied actually mm -hmm. with the experience. Uh, I think we have managed to warn people also like they know that uh, the people can be a little bit different uh, and, and I think people are already prepared when they come mm -hmm. here so it's always good to do a little bit of research before, mm -hmm. how the people are, uh, like what is accepted, what is not accepted. There are some unwritten rules yeah. uh, we try to also talk to students about. Uh, no? For example, one of the things mm -hmm. is that when you go to visit somebody that you always take your shoes off. Mm -hmm. and, and the Estonians are in this sense like quite uh, like shy to say. Right? They maybe <laughs> make this face like, oh my God, they're coming with the shoes and all everything is now muddy, but yeah. they don't tell you anything. So mm -hmm. you just see that something okay. is wrong, but you don't know. So these things are maybe good to know in advance. But uh, they said that Estonian people are also straightforward, why, why they are being shy under these. I think it's like a little bit like maybe like not trying not to have this conflict okay. or like, like we're, we're still, I think we're very hosp uh, hospitable people. Yes, yes, so yes, yes. Uh, we, we like to have visitors and we have like to have uh, people feel comfortable and then Sometimes like you feel a little bit uneasy, like you don't mm -hmm. want to say that, like you think that maybe you, feel, uh, you make the other person feel That's uncomfortable. That's true. I have also felt uh, from Estonians that they don't prefer to have conflicts. Yeah. <laughs> so they might not say uh, things. Uh, but in generally, I can say that um, as I came here at the age of 19, it shaped my personality so much that before I used to be more cheerful person, <laughs> but now I'm very calm and um, observant in a way. And you have probably learned to appreciate that you go to the shop and nobody bothers you. <laughs> yes, yes, also. And uh, when I visit my own country, it, it, it's so much effort to get used to again this crowd, this mm -hmm. uh, too much connection. Now there are very, very less people around you. And during this COVID situation, I think... Um, actually, let's talk about COVID uh, situation, how uh, it was for international people or from your side as a coordinator. Uh, as for everybody, it came very mm -hmm. suddenly. We were suddenly like, just shut down. Mm -hmm. uh, needed to stay at home, organize everything from home. Students from their dormitories. Uh, many people were uh, very insecure what was going to happen. Um, students, uh, some of my exchange students, they decided to go home. Uh, I think they got scared and, uh, and they thought that, okay, it's better to go home. And since the online uh, possibility was offered, then they could finish, most of them finish their studies uh, from home. Uh, but there uh, were quite many students that decided to stay. And on top of that, there were students who decided to stay longer than actually needed. Mm. They said that it became so... Uh, kind of relaxed here because we do not have many people in the country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, even Tallinn, the capital, is, is quite empty, has always been, apart from the old town yeah, in, yeah. in summer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, it, it, it was so nice they could enjoy walks outside, which was uh, a no-no in, in many other mm -hmm. countries. Uh, as some of my students said that they, they just like went for walks everywhere, yes. in town, to the forest and yeah. And I think it was in the end, it was not that hard and, and I know that some, some students were extremely satisfied. Exactly, that's what I wanted to mention. Uh, my Covid period was way easier uh, here because it was calmer, it was safer and everything. So I didn't even go to my country. So then thank you so much for all the uh, information that you provided. But do you have something to add? 
Well, I would just like to say that whenever you have uh, questions or doubts, don't hesitate to ask. Um, I think Estonians are also, uh, in this sense, very open. They, they tell you what is going on and they're straightforward. If you ask, like, for example, like, I, I noticed that, I, I think I did something wrong, what do you think what it was? And they will tell you, mm -hmm. they will tell you, like, you know, like, next time you go to visit somebody, take your shoes off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, things like that that you can you can always ask. Like, what is what is okay in Estonia? What are some of the topics that maybe we don't want to talk about? Mm -hmm. uh, some of the topics that are okay to talk about. Uh, so always ask. I don't think mm -hmm. people would ever mind that. We are happy to give explanations to to give a long long uh, account of our history. <laughs> so. Uh, just be open-minded and, and yeah. I'm sure you will enjoy your time despite the weather, yeah, yeah, yeah. despite the darkness and everything. Yeah, everything is easy, just um, research and have your own answers, yes. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank so, you so much. much. Thank you.